Namaskaram everyone. Welcome back to the 12th episode of our Master and Real series and in this episode we are going to continue the last part where we left the inventory system. In the last episode we created a system to spawn the items in the world. They can be hidden inside a barrel or maybe lying around here and there. And now in this episode we are going to interact with them by going near to them and pressing E to grab them. So if you haven't watched the previous episode I highly highly recommend you do that because there are certain classes that we created purely in blueprints. So please do check it out before you implement this one and as usual the project resources are available on discord please check the description for the invite link and let's get started. Open your blueprints folder and then create a blueprint class and it should be an actor component and name it bpc underscore inventory manager and if you open your third person character you can add this inventory manager here all right open it you can hit compile here so in this inventory manager we are going to create a function get nearby items okay so we will be detecting the nearby items and this function will be called every tick okay hit compile now go to your nearby items now how do we detect the nearby items is by going to the inventory system b item and we will add a sphere collider so search for sphere collision and move the static mesh inside this sphere hit compile so to detect the collision with those items we are going to add a node sphere overlap actors we will give it radius of let's say 100 centimeters and the class that we want to detect is b underscore item remember this is inventory management so this particular component only cares about the actors that are of class B item because that's what you can add it in your inventory and it's not gonna search around the entire level it's going to create a sphere around your character up to 100 centimeters so this is one of the efficient ways you can detect the nearby items and let's get our character so in the event begin play I'm going to cast to BP underscore third person character and here I'm going to get owner and plug this here and I'll create a variable character and change it to BP third person character object reference and then I'm going to update it once this is done save and compile uh, it's okay go to get nearby items get your character and get the actor location so this is this fair position and let's call this object type to make array and here I'm going to say world dynamic so we are going to simply return it okay and now hit compile now once this is done you go to your event graph and you will get nearby items every tick and now we need to set this but this get nearby items is giving us the array of actor okay so it doesn't care about what class as a filter you provide it is eventually going to give us the array of actors so the nearby items here would be actor object reference okay and change it to array save in the event graph bring this nearby items here and update it now if there is no items then also we want to update it if there are items then also we want to update it but let's say if there are items then I want to go for branch node and here I just want to print string and say items detected okay and hit compile now if I go to my game and play if I go near to my item you can see item detected is logged if I move away item detected is gone so it is working fine so I'm going to create a widget in the widgets folder here let's search for widget blueprints go for user widget name it wbp underscore action message ui and now inside this we are going to add a canvas let's drag it out search for text field put it here 
one more okay so we have two blocks let's drag the first one here and second one here so this first text block will be our action key so let's hard code it for now press e and size to content so we want to make this blueprint a little modular and generalized and let's right click on this and wrap with border now after this we want to change the background color so i'm going to select the brush a little black our action and let's change its anchor to this and the text block as well so for the text box we are going to select the same bottom middle bottom okay and size to content should be checked let's add some padding here let's go for left 16 right 16 and the top should be 8 there should be 8 now this text message is variable because any action message can be placed here so let's change this variable name to action message save it compile it go to graph and now you'll find your action message variable present here we are going to create an event custom event name it show action message and let's do again set text this is the one bring this action message as a target and we are going to expect an input and name it message the type would be string plug it here and this would be here save it compile it and now our widget blueprint is ready we can go to inventory manager so if we detect some item then we are going to load this but before this we want to create the instance so search for create widget and here you can provide your class that is nothing but this blueprint that we created and this will give us an instance so let's right click and promote to variable name it action message ui once this is done we can add to viewport and action message ui will be here and now we are going to change the message so go for a show action message and the message would be pickup but if there is no blueprint then we want to destroy this so we will search for remove from parents and this is going to plug here compile and now if you hit play go to item you can see press e to pick up if you go here if you go far then you will not see anything so i noticed one thing when you are breaking the barrel sometimes you do not get any item but still b item is present and because of that we saw press e to pick up so we need to handle that situation and that's something we forgot to handle in the last episode so we are going to handle it right now so what i'm going to do is this is the destroy actor which is going to destroy the barrel once the barrel spawned this new item so i'm going to cut it and i'm going to place right here okay now this barrel will be destroyed and then the item will be summoned but we need to check whether we are even getting an item from this mechanism or not because if there is a default value then of course we are going to go for it but let's say if there is no default value or there's a situation where the default value is none then in that case also we need to handle the final class that has to be summoned another situation is the items has a possibility that you might get a green hub shotgun and the handgun ammo but you can also get nothing so if there is no item that you are obtaining then we should not spawn the actor at the first place right so how to handle this situation is by just placing this entire logic before spawning so for this what we can do is get spawn item okay and i'm going to cut this entire logic and i'm going to place it here call a return node so this particular node is going to give us the class of the item that we need to spawn and this is going to give us the default count so if this gives us none then we should not spawn the item at the first place so first let's plug this here here as well and now we call a not equal so if it is not equal to none then only we should spawn the item so let's rearrange okay let's connect this to this and this should be is valid okay and this should be class to be spawned item quantity so these are the three things 
Now, if we just save it, go back to our event graph and here and break this link and call this get spawn item. We are going to destroy the barrel. Then we are going to get a spawn item. Now, if we got a valid item, then only we are going to spawn otherwise not. So I'm going to plug this new class that we need to spawn here and the quantity here. Okay. Now if I save and compile, so I got nothing. And if I go here, there is nothing. I don't see any press E to pick up. All right. So that bug is fixed. So now let's go back to our inventory manager. Now this is done. Now what do we want is when we press E, we want to pick the nearby item. So I'm going to go inside the input actions and I'm going to duplicate this crutch. So let's duplicate it and call it IA underscore action and open it, save it, go back in the IMC default. Let's add a key. So for this, I'm going to add a mapping. Map it to IA action. The key should be E. All right. And then save it. Go back to your third person character. So this is what we did last time. And let's call our input action here. Okay. Now, once this is pressed, we are going to fire the inventory manager to pick the item. Okay. So for this, I'm going to go inside the inventory manager and I'm going to summon a custom event and I'm going to say pick item. Okay. And I'm going to go here and then let's pull out the inventory manager, search for pick item. Okay. Now save it, compile it, go to the pickup item event. So what we are going to do is find nearby item. And here I'm going to create a local variable for this function that will store temporary distance. Temp min distance is a float. Remember the default value of this variable has to be greater than the radius size that you had. So I'll just give it 10,000. Okay. And I'm going to create another temporary variable that is going to store the item temp nearest item. Remember this is a local variable. That means when the function is executed, these will be destroyed. Okay. So this is just for holding the values till the execution is going on of this function. Okay. So I'm going to keep the type B underscore item because these are the items that are nearby and I'm going to set the initial value to 10,000 again here. And I'm also going to set the nearest item to nothing. Now, once this is done, I'm going to get this nearby items. Remember nearby items is going to be calculated every tick. Also, I want to do this entire stuff only when there are items. So if there are items, then we should go for it. Otherwise we should not go for the further execution. So I can use a branch node that checks the length of this array. So if it is greater than zero, then only we should go further. Now we can connect this to this. So what we are going to do is loop with a break. And now I'm going to iterate over these items and I'm going to compare the distance of each item with the character. And if it is less than what we calculated before, then we are going to save the distance and that item in these temporary variables till the loop is completed. Okay. So let's bring out the character get the actor location and then again use get actor location. Now we are going to subtract it. So this is the vector result. We need to convert it into a number. So go for vector length and now we are going to compare it with the minimum distance that we calculated. Initially it will be 10,000. So it would be less. So let's go for a less than operator. So if this value is less than this one, then only we are going to consider this item and its distance. So I'm going to bring the temp nearest item and we need to cast to be underscore item because this is an actor class and we want to cast it to the B item. So 
once the cast is successful, then we will save it. And this distance value is going to be updated in this particular local variable. Okay. So we go like this first item we check if it is less than then we save it. Now this particular variable will hold the distance of that item. When you go for the second item, we are going to compare that again with the previous item that we saved. And that's how we are going to calculate the nearest item. And once all this is done, we are going to go for nearest item variable. I'm going to bring it here and then I'm going to set it. And that value would be this. Okay, once this is done, I'm going to return the node and let's pass this here as well. Okay, so this will give us the nearest item compile. We will get the nearby item. And now once this item is found, we are going to check whether that item exists or not. Okay, now this is going to check whether this object is valid or not. And if it is valid, then we will destroy the actor because we are going to add it in our inventory. So I'm going to go for destroy actor. And this is the item that I want to destroy because it will be collected by the character. Now if I hit compile and let's also go for print string and say collected. Okay, and change this color to pink compile play and if I go near to my herb press E I collected it okay so that's it for this episode I hope you enjoy it and do share it with your friends like it subscribe to the channel join our discord community to stay tuned and to give us more feedback and to ask your questions and I'll see you in the next episode where we are going to preview the item and we'll make a decision whether we want to collect it or not. So till then, see you. Tada. Bye bye.